welcome back into episode 130. It's starting to sound like a dart score, isn't it? Uh, will I ever get to a 180? You see, exciting stuff. Um, so, last week you saw me unveil the GT that I bought. I don't want to lose focus on the 79 car, so don't worry, it will be coming back very soon. But this video is going to focus on the GT again. What I want to do, my big plan, is that very soon I'm going to be prepping the 79 car for spray. So, I'll be stripping it out inside, probably taking the engine back out, grind off all that paint, and that will go off to be sprayed, or prepped and then sprayed. So while it's away, which is going to be quite a while, and while it's out of action, which is going to be quite a while, I want to use the GT. I want to have some fun in the GT, uh, do some road trips and stuff. I can't use it in the way it looks because it looks bad. I'm not saying I'm going to fix it completely, but it looks really bad at the moment. The uh, lacquer is all peeling off and all sorts of problems. So what I want to try and do this week is do a temporary fix to it. Get it so it's usable. Uh, and then I can just be using it and discovering what it needs. I know it needs a cam belt change. I know there's a few oil leaks, but I just want to use it for, well, obviously do the cam belt, but then use it for a while and work out what else needs to happen. I've got the stereo um, part fitted uh, stereo, so I want to finish that off. There's a few bits and bobs that are pretty straightforward to do. There's um, the aluminium sort of bumper bar at the back goes underneath the plastic bumper is cracked and you get that out uh, there's been a bit of damage at the front so investigate what that is uh, so this week you know it's gonna be GT week um, as I always say comments like subscribe subscribing really helps so keep doing that please um, you know I like the comments so leave me a comment but let's just dive in and I'll show you what I get up to well, I'm not pretending that this wing is gonna come up uh, anything perfect but while the uh, 79 car is being restored, stripped down and painted, um, I do want to use the GT. It also gives me time to get to know the car a bit better. So, um, part of using it, I don't want to look, don't want it to look horrendous, which means I need to take off this, um, this sort of stuff, whatever it is on it. Um, what I think it is is lacquer that has got baked in the sun and gone a bit weird, and then maybe a bit of algae's got in there. Um, anyway, so what I'm going to be doing is um, taking off with some uh, probably 800 grit sandpaper, uh, you know, sort of soaked in water, so wet and dry really. Um, I did a little experiment up, right up the top of the wing, I'm not sure if you can see it from there. And that's come down pretty, I don't want to say good, that would be an exaggeration, but it was knackered and now, and now it's not. So I'm going to continue the process down here um, and just see where we end up really. It's particularly bad here. I think where we're going to really see some action is when I hit the bonnet. Uh, the bonnet's got some, some beautiful stuff on. I may even let you can see when I do that. I don't know if you can see. It is, it's, it's definitely dubious. Um, I think when I come to hit the bonnet, we'll see some real, real progress. Uh, and if I can get that so at least people don't cry when they see the bonnet or, or this, um, the paintwork, I think that's quite a good place to get. <laughs> One problem I want to look at is this sort of flaking paint here. Um, it's pretty isolated. I can only find one place where it's happened. Um, I don't really know why either. So either way, what I'm going to do is cut out this um, sort of peeling paint and remove what I can. We're going to fill over it, sand it, and then um, when I come and sort of sort out this whole wing, I'll give a spray. Remember, these are just sort of temporary fixes. Uh, until I can work out whether to spray the whole car or how to do it and all those sort of things. So I'm just going to pick away at it actually and just remove the high points. Just drop down the side. Um, if I use my knife just to score it to create sort of an easy fracture point. What I'm really after is removing anything that's high so I can sand it. Um, you know, if I put a piece of filler in here, I can then just sand across it rather than having to sort of try to sand down the harder paint. Right, let's start with quite aggressive sandpaper. This is 120. Um, let's try and get this down to something a bit smoother. I 
Right, I've mixed up the filler. Um, I've opted not to prime it first. I think this is the right way around. Um, this isn't a long-term solution. This is until I work out whether I'm going to spray the whole car. Um, so anyway, let's just get this on. And up to the... Um, it's kind of like a recess, so up to the line that has been created. This is your opportunity now to press the comment button and tell me why I'm doing this wrong. While you're there, press the like button and hell, we might as well subscribe as well. Why not while, you, while you're in the zone? Um, tell me everything I'm doing wrong, what I'm doing right, if you would do this, if you wouldn't do this, etc. Right, right, so um, I've just been given a DA sort of grinder thing by my father, um, and I've got some 600 grit pads on there. If anyone could tell me whether I should use purple, yellow or green, let me know. Uh, the best I could tell is that purple is uh, for doing this sort of thing, uh, but do let me know. Anyway, that's 600, um, I'm going to put some water on it, I've just wiped it a little bit now. Uh, the goal here is just to get this uh, lacquer off, so we're back down to the paint. First attempt, so let's try it. I want to make sure there's enough, um, I don't know if I should be using water at all actually to be honest. So. Let's try it without any and see what it does. So, I think I'm right in saying that that is taking lacquer off because it's white. Up the end here, so no, it's not actually. There's a bit blacker up the end there where I know I've gone through the lacquer. Um, so it comes off black, which is paint. But that seems to be quite happily taken off the lacquer. Uh, so let's keep going. I mean, it's super smooth now, which is good. Um, actually, impressively smooth. Down this end here, let me give you a zoom in. It might not be possible to see because the uh, sun's shining, but the, you can see the sort of cracks and little lines in the lacquer. So th all this needs to come off, so let's just keep going. So you can see it's getting blacker. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, in the sunlight you can. Uh, so we're going through the lacquer now. This is what I need to do, and this presumably is where it's coming through to the paint. Um, it's okay to take a little bit of paint off. I'm sure it's not uh, as thin as, you know, like a tiny little bit of dust. It must be a bit thicker. Uh, still more to do down here, where you can see. I know a lot of you have been thinking, why am I doing this? I'm doing it because I think I can potentially short term rescue this paint, uh, which means I can use this car while this car's off being sprayed. I'm also gaining knowledge and experience about how to DA and how to get off paint from a car. Um, which is what I'm going to need on the old white one over there. So it's all good learning. Um, I stopped because I just wanted to show you that. You can see all the little scratches and things. This is, um, you can see the wheels just here. So it's the side, sort of as it rolls over on the, on the front wing fender. Um, you can see the scratches, horrendous scratches. So I'm going to cut that lacquer off until I'm through that. Um, all this, I believe this is where that paint and this is still lacquer because all of that is white and if I can I can show you but it's black here so it's cutting into the paint there's a funny mark there that I'm hoping will go um, trying to avoid the sun so it doesn't carry over the uh, camera and up here um, I think there's still lacquer on here I think I'll come up here in a little while and have a look you can see those scratches there really quite deep someone's been backs and forwards I don't know what they were doing with it uh, let's see if we can get them out oh, I don't know if you can tell that has almost taken it out completely uh, needs a bit more 
but those the deep scratches have come out. Amazing. Um, and we're not quite through the lackey yet either by the looks of it. You look and you see black on my hands. That means we're through the lacquer, doesn't it? Good. All right, so I think what I'm gonna do is take a break because my back hurts, leaning over carrying that thing. Um, and then I'll come back and just crack on, try and get through all of this. so well so I took the GT out to do a school run the other day got to a supermarket car park and it wouldn't start everything click the uh, the ignition everything clicks on all the powers there but the starter motor doesn't engage so uh, to solve the problem uh, last night actually um, I just got my wife to tow it jump start it like that or bump start it uh, bump start it, no problem at all in the garage up in the air I've uh, just check the start motor wiring, that all looks good. So I'm about to take the 14 pin connector apart and pin 14 is the wire that goes down to the solenoid on the start motor. I'm gonna just touch that onto the hot post right next to each other. Um, that will narrow down. If that turns the engine over, then I know that the um, problem is towards the fuse board, ignition switch, um, starter relay. If it doesn't turn over, I know the problem's down by the solenoid, the starter motor, that sort of direction. My gut feeling is the starter motor's jammed. Uh, and I could just whack it with a hammer and it probably would be all right. But let's do this test because it's a really good sort of binary chop. You know, it chops the problem in half and we can see where we go. Right, I hate doing this test, but uh, here it goes. So this is connecting, um, and don't worry before I do this, the car is in neutral. Uh, I've checked about five times, it's in neutral. Ain't catching me out by being in gear. Right, first gear, neutral. Second gear, neutral. That must be neutral. This is taking 12 volts from the hot post and putting it straight onto pin 14, which is this pin here. Nothing. So what that says is my problem is further down, down towards the starter motor, I believe. Um, interesting. Okay, when you get under the car again. Right, by now you know I love sitting under a car. Um, we traced the, I traced the wiring just here, seems right. So, start motor out. Um, I think that's the first time I've been under the car again, like properly for a while. Uh, and obviously I've never been under the GT like this. Uh, it's very oily under there, I'll tell you that. But, they have got the start motor out. Um, it turns, so I know it's not jammed up. I'm gonna bench test it tomorrow and we'll see why it's misbehaving. If it needs rebuilding, I've got a guy I can send that to. I don't know if you remember, I don't know how many episodes ago, but I had on the 79, the start motor started playing up. I took, I took it apart, couldn't get it back together, <laughs> took it down to him and he put it, reassembled it for me, put it back together. So um, let's get this on the bench and test it. I won't take it apart this time, I'll just take it to him if it's dodgy, uh, and we'll see what we've got. <sighs> right, doing my uh, super safe start motor test. So earthing onto the casing, earth to the battery, um, power, when I do connect it, goes into the big bolt. Then we've got a wire that comes across onto the, um, I can't remember it's 15 or 50, I think it's 50, isn't it? That tells the solenoid to engage and everyone gets happy and the starter motor works. You can see, we get a little spark, nothing. Now I meant to go, I sort of waggled it around a bit. Let's try to see if I can do it on camera. Um, and I got it to actually do something more than nothing. It actually popped out and oh, I don't know if I can turn it enough. Um, it did actually engage, but not spin. So something else obviously is toast inside the starter. Oh yeah, the starter motor was definitely dead. 
Um, I dropped over to Burfield Starter and Alternator Repair Centre. Uh, Kevin down there has turned my starter motor around in two days flat. And look at that. It's like a new unit. That's had the full service. That's got new brushes, new bearings, new bits and bobs inside the uh, inside the solenoid. I don't know what he did inside there, but it's all new. Uh, it's looking fantastic. So I'm going to get under there now and refit it. I'm not going to video it because it's a pain. Um, but it's pretty straightforward. I don't see any major problems going to happen there. Uh, and then we check the castle starts. Right, I'm all taped up. Um, all I'm doing here, I've repaired this. It's getting very hard to tell if there's any dents or anything, any little bumps and things. So I'm going to spray a bit of primer across it. It's had two minutes of shake. Um, I've taped up sort of adequately, I think. There's a very small area I'm going to spray. Um, I'm just going to put a tiny little bit across it and just see what it looks like. And then I can use that to, um, obviously, to wet and dry down again. Right, that'll do for starter. Right, so uh, I'll try and give you a view of this spraying, how it's going. There's a little line here. I don't know if you can see it. I'm trying to sort of put some light across it. I need to sand that out still, but the rest of it, I think, I mean, it's invisible from what I can see. It's just that one line. So I'll uh, wet and dry it and then give it another coat of primer and we'll see what it looks like. But I mean, it's getting there considering what it was like. Pretty happy where I've got to with the rubbing down of this now. Um, it's just got a bit of primer across it so I can see where the, uh, if there's any indentations or anything. I can barely feel anything, I'm just, I mean really, it's possibly a little tiny leg ridge there still. Um, I'm going to wet sand this off anyway at some point, uh, but what I'd like to do now is get this bumper off. The reason I get the bumper off is because it's had a whack or something at the front and I can't tell what. So if I take the bumper off, I can see what's actually going on in there. Um, I also have the problem, if I just move you around a little bit to this side, you should be able to see here, um, I've just um, sort of ground a bit of the paint, but where the bumpers come in, it sort of pushed the wing out and it split the aluminium on the inside edge there. So that's gonna need welding or dealing with. Uh, and I wanted just to grind off the paint just to see how bad it is, whether the split is coming through the front of the wing as well. It doesn't look like it is, but potentially it is a little bit there. Um, but I'll let the welder deal with that. I'll probably have to strip all the paint off in this region, get it back into shape. But to push it back into shape, I need that bumper off. So let's get that bumper off now. Is a painful, it's this tiny little, I don't know if I'll bother refocusing for you, but they're tiny, tiny little nuts. And they're tucked up, they're so tight, really tricky to get to. But I'm getting there. And another one. Right, that should be the last little nut. So, right, that's all those nasty little nuts out. So I'm expecting the bumper to come off now. Um, this side's obviously falling off constantly um, and I've got a couple of things I need to hold it up. I'm hoping that side will do much the same. With a little bit of uh, persuasion, it should just kind of pop out. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's tricky to see why it won't just come out, but it's, um, it's this last bolt goes through and its washer's kind of trapped underneath, um, or between two plates. There, got it. Ooh. Right. Okay. And hopefully I can just lower this down without breaking. Let's put that bumper off, we can get right in there now. Um, so where I'm looking then, there's a bit of corrosion here. I don't like the look of this, so I think <clears throat> what I probably need to do is just strip all this down, wire brush it, and we'll see what's going on in there. Um, there's obviously some broken bits here. Now luckily with the car came uh, a new one of these, or a replacement one of these, so I'll put that in. Um, I can't see crash damage. I'm still looking, this edge here, it's a little bit twisted perhaps. It does sort of kink down here anyway, you know, this, oh sorry, this isn't crash damage, it does the same on, or similar-ish on the other side. You'd never bend that, I don't think. Um, but there's something a bit dubious and this is a bit rotten. Uh, that piece there should be flat and it's bent down. So something potentially there. Um, <clears throat> otherwise, I'm not seeing much. I mean, the I think there's a chassis legs, aren't there? They come all the way up. Um, these are straight, same on the other side. I can't get over there, so you'll have to believe me. Um, curious that the bumper thing, this is the bit that takes all the impact, if there is an impact. It's different on both sides for some reason. So I'd like to know why and what on earth that thing is, because like a, <laughs> I don't really know what, it's a thing. Uh, so we need to look at that. What the actual f But it's really not bad under here. I'm not seeing anything that makes me think, my God, um, what's going on with this car? So I don't know what's up with it. <clears throat> Why doesn't that bumper fit? Potentially it's just the bumper that's dented. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is going. Uh, potentially it's just the bumper that's knackered. Uh, and I've been um, sourcing a new one or a replacement one of these anyway. So that's not a big deal, I don't think. Um, let's, anyway, let's get in there and clean this thing up and see what's happening. Right, it's flicked straight in my face, which is nice. Um, light is always my problem. I just can't see enough. Uh, I'm working big in the up, actually. It's not that bad. I'm not the most flattering camera angle, but... Um, so, in the spares that I got with the car, I came one of these, which is this sort of variable vent thing that sits at the front uh, here. And this one's completely smashed up. Probably part of when this got whacked. Um, so let's take this off, I'll swap over while I'm in here and then we can start trying to think what we do about here. If anything, I don't really, I still can't see what's wrong, if anything, apart from it's a bit rusty. Um, and the headlights sit a bit wonky, so I think at the bare minimum I will undo the headlights and sort of readjust the stuff. But I don't know that there's a lot to fix in there, if anything. There might, maybe it's bent a little bit, I don't think so, but... Um, <clears throat> I don't know really, but we'll, I'll have a look at that in a minute. For now, let's just take this off and see if it's a straightforward switchover. Looks identical, so I'm hoping it will be. Maybe not. All right, we'll just snap it off for the moment, like that. There, there's the dodgy one. If anyone needs that motor off of there, shout. Right, it should be straightforward to put this replacement thing on. Yeah, that looks okay to me. Good. One hand. Um, so where I'm looking then is along this bar here. It looks like it's kinked or something's odd. And I would say that's been welded there. If you can get a good look. There's something funny has gone on here. So probably it's been, you know, hit or something. I can't see any other damage. This is uh, odd. When I actually look in the parts thing, that one there with the sort of the T-bar end is correct. This is incorrect. So probably this has been replaced. Everything here backwards looks okay. So there's nothing wrong with the chassis legs or anything there. Chassis rails, whatever you call them. Um, but there is definitely something dodgy here. So I need to work out what to do with that. Um, let me know if you know, actually. I mean, if I give you a better, better angle, having never seen one of these, I don't know whether that's supposed to be bent like that. The other side's fairly similar. It's, I mean, it's relatively straight. It's just, at this end, I have to put the light down, there's this sort of, this bit, which I think is correct, but 
to me this looks low here something anyway if you know let me know if you've got photos let me know um, it's hard to find another similar car with the front end off to compare against um, anyway that's that and as part of that same uh, bumper damage if we go inside this front wing what I'm looking at is again there's no vis visible damage apart from this is the um, the bracket that goes across and holds the bumper uh, sorry holds the wing in place now this is bonded to the uh, inside or the outside of the engine bay this is sort of you know in the wheel arch that has come unbonded so my guess is that it's all been whacked backwards it just come out if this has been pushed backwards this has been pushed backwards this edge of the uh, the wing which has caused the wing to flare out a little bit which has caused these cracks here which I've just uncovered uh, sort of ground off so I can have a look what's going on there that's caused that to come out and at the same time it's pushed back this stay if I can tap it that one so I need to work out how to rebond that there Sorry, I'm not really filming you very well. Um, how to rebond that? I was hoping this was going to be uh, metal so I could just weld it back on, but it's not. One thought is to actually create this out of metal and weld it on, um, or I can put a, you know, I can bolt it on uh, or screw it on. Um, I'm not going to be able to rebond that, am I? Let's be honest. Anyway, um, so that is what's going on there, I think. So to resolve this side, I contemplate getting a new wing, but I think I can actually just get this welded a couple of little bits and then weld and fill. Having the crack stay will pull this wing in. Um, it'll just do that with it and pull it actually forwards and up like that, which pulls the front, the nose cone back up a little bit. All this comes up, which means the bumper will then fit properly on this side, probably similar on the other side. So it's kind of dawned on me that um, going through this, stripping all the lacquer off, repairing the front, and while it's going quite well, let's be honest, I'm not gonna be able to spray that with rattle cans, you know, the, uh, not the spray gun, the actual cans, and it actually look all right. Sure, I'm gonna to have to put down the base coat, then put the lacquer on and polish it and stuff. It's never gonna look very good. Um, so I've part the idea of um, spraying it. Then I went down the route of thinking, well, I could wrap the car. I can probably wrap this, the entire car, for about 700 pounds, maybe like a $1,000. Um, and it'll probably look really good. But to wrap it, I need to prep the car as if I was going to spray, which is going to take time away from the old timer here. Um, I really want to focus on that and get that sprayed. I think it's look fantastic when I get that done. And the plan was just to use the GT while that car's in the garage, you know, being sprayed. So I've parked also the idea of wrapping it. So then I was just sort of standing there thinking, what could I do? What could I do? And I looked up there and I've got black leather dye. My car's black, black leather dye. You see the problem I've come up with um, or the solution I've come up with. So I just tried a little bit on the corner and it actually looks pretty good. So off camera, because I wasn't sure it was going to work and sometimes you kind of get into things and just do it. Uh, I've re-dyed my old car. <laughs> uh, I think it's worked quite well. Let's show you what I've done. Um, I'm kind of pleased with it because it's got it to that state that is okay to drive and not look horrific. It still looks tatty, of course, but I'll show you what it looks like. I'll pop up what it was like before, and I'm not pretending it's perfect. You can still see where it's sort of burnt through the, or the lac has come off here. There's a patch on the bonnet there somewhere, but it isn't white uh, or moldy white. Around here, it was all across the door trim here. Um, I went and dried the lacquer off and just gave it a little rub. <laughs> it's, kind of, it's kind of worked. Uh, even the black spoiler, this was horrendous. Um, I've just put the black dye on it and it's, it made it look like it's rubber because the lacquer is really bumpy. But it looks all right. Around this side, it was also horrific. Um, all down here, all down here was terrible. Across here. Uh, the passenger door I've not got to because I can't actually get in there. But it's not white, so it won't need much of my magical dye. Uh, and I wish I could get outside, but it's not stopped raining for about four days solid now. But as you can see, the car is now black. Um, I want to do a little bit more here. I experimented here, putting a bit more on, and it's, I've got a load of lines. But you can see it's better than it was. Um, it just looks tatty now as opposed to horrendous. Actually, look, I've not done here. This is what it was like. So you can get a little bit of contrast. 
it's pretty nasty this it's just gone really weird and this wasn't as bad as the uh, the worst bit was here on the bonnet it was just white so that's where i'm going to leave it this week don't hate on my dying technique too much uh it's just a temporary fix so i can use the car some point this will be sprayed stripped down and sprayed all properly don't worry the real focus is to get the 79 car done um so yeah that's where i'm gonna leave it this week I'm quite pleased with the progress. I've had a look in that front bumper. I'd love you to leave me some comments about what you think on that. The, I don't know what that bar's called across the front where the bonnet catches um, that front bit. What's happened there? It looks like it's something's happened on the passenger side front, been welded or something. Uh, I don't know. Uh, at some point down the line, when I've got further on that, I'll take that front wing off and we can have a proper look in there and maybe sort it out a bit more. I'll get a replacement bumper so we can just try a proper bumper on the front there. Um, there's something weird with the bracket that holds the bumper on that goes on the inside of the bonnet, you know, where that catches. There's, there was some really weird, I don't know what the wire, uh, like this metal strip of holes in it. It's not, not original, so uh, I need to replace that. Uh, again, let me know uh, what that should look like. Um, but yeah. Let's move on. This needs a cam belt change. I've just clicked buy, so the cam belt will come in a couple of days. So I might do the next video of a cam belt change on this. Um, what I'd really like to start is to start stripping that down. So maybe the next video will be focusing on the 79 car. But anyway, let's wrap up there. Thank you as ever for watching. Click like, subscribe, leave me comments, tell me what I've done here. And I'll see you next time.